Hello everyone, my name is Elvida Xenu. I'm a research associate at the Hellenic Institute of Transport of CERT, and today I'm going to present you on-demand warehousing techniques for city logistics. The rapid rise of the e-commerce during the recent years, in addition with the highly competitive and constantly changing business environment, have brought significant changes in the way that companies respond to their customers. Starting from the USA and spreading worldwide, the need for flexible and agile supply chains has become a necessity for long-term sustainability. Moreover, the excess increase of the e-business and the time-sensitive customer requirements of the, over the last few years have created the need for implementing on-demand logistics concepts as well as developing cooperative logistics schemes. The term on-demand economy, also known in literature as gig economy or sharing economy, was first introduced by technological startup companies that penetrated the market the past decade. The concept behind this new trend was the provision of innovative solutions for connecting the demand for a service or a product with the supply through a single access point and thus satisfying instantly the customer's demand. The sharing economy is built upon the idea of cooperation among the companies and individuals in order to share the benefit from the excess capacity of their assets. This new trend has opened a wide range of opportunities for entrepreneurs who strive after innovation. Furthermore, the on-demand economy is beneficial to customers as services are often more available for a lower price than in traditional economy. From a consumer perspective, the on-demand economy has brought along an increased accessibility of services thanks to the widespread availability of fast internet and smartphones. Finally, on a macro level, the advantages of this trend include asset sharing and efficient use of resources, for example, the ability to utilize housing properties like Airbnb, for example, that is unoccupied, cars that are not frequently used by a single person, and so on. The on-demand economy is revolutionizing commercial behavior in cities around the world. The U.S., as the unofficial birth birthplace of this trend is a market that has many on-demand economy companies than most. What started with an on-demand ride-sharing app has now extended into a number of different market segments ranging from transportation and for people and or products, renting out space like Airbnb, providing other uh, services like TaskRabbit, etc. The present state of on-demand economy is such that no matter what interesting industry you look into, you will find an active on-demand mobile app development company working to make it real-time. Many ask, is this a bubble? Is this a short-term trend? The numbers show that no. The new on-demand models have opened the door to real-time fulfillment of goods and services, which consumers have embraced with a frequency that is unprecedented. A survey on 3,000 Americans by the Aspen Institute and Time found that 44% of the population is active on on-demand platforms. Furthermore, estimations show that the market for on-demand mobile apps and websites will see, reach a significant value of $300 billion by the year of 2025. While the on-demand mobile app uh, economy is prompting over 22 million users annually. In China, has also many fast-growing on-demand economy companies for the internal market, which consists of more than 100 million users. In Europe, similar kinds of online surveys have been, uh, have been undertaken, of which the results are fairly similar across countries. The Eurobarometer found that 17% uh, of the EU citizens used platforms in, in early in 2016, However, a large difference in the performance among the countries can be noticed. France and Ireland seem to be the drivers of on-demand economy in Europe, as 35 to 36 percent of the citizens use on-demand services at least once uh, every few months. On the other hand, though, Greece and Cyprus are not very active yet to this trend. So far in the logistics sector, the on-demand economy services 
logistic services were mostly related to the instant delivery services. Instant deliveries are the provision of next hour or two hours window delivery services implemented by either a private actor or an independent act contractor. Particularly in EU, the on-demand deliveries are noticed to be one of the fastest growing on-demand logistic sectors with an increase of the customer's participation in 2017 up to 110% and total spending 8.2 billion. This growth of the transport sector, the rapid development and the direction towards next hours, next day deliveries, forced the companies to search for alternative solutions to the traditional warehousing in order to maintain a competitive advantage. During the last decade, all companies that own or use warehouse facilities, either retailers, manufacturers or 3PL companies, face difficulties to determine warehousing strategies. Some organizations operate in very demanding environment with extremely seasonal fluctuations in the demand. Furthermore, finding and securing warehouse space for periods of excess demand can be a time-consuming, lengthy and often frustrating process. In response to that, one of the latest trends in supply chain management and logistics worldwide, with several startups to be noticed popping up in US and in Europe, seems to be the operation of free marketplaces that provide on-demand warehousing services. Warehouse on demand is filling the need for flexible, short-term warehouse space across a fast-paced capacity crunch supply chain. The on-demand warehouse model helps to transform a traditional fixed cost into a variable cost that enables greater flexibility in areas of the supply chain through cooperation and sharing capacities. In the US, a company called uh, Flexe is fast becoming, uh, becoming the Airbnb of the warehousing, while similar e-marketplaces can be found also in Europe and China. In five years, Flexe has built a marketplace for spare storage capacity, storage space in 500 warehouses representing close to 2.3 million square meters without purchasing any assets. In 2019, the company announced a $43 million investment run to meet demand from a growing number of companies needing pop-up storage uh, space. According to a report published uh, by, Flexe, by Flexe, the companies that use on-demand warehouse space in order to meet a single peak seasonal increase in inventory were found to have improved the utilization of the warehouse by approximately 100%. In addition, these, com these companies reported that they were successful in reducing seasonal inventory and warehouse costs by 50%. Despite the development of such marketplaces for on-demand warehousing worldwide, Greek stakeholders have paid little attention so far. Although there are existing platforms in freight transportation in Greece, which constantly gain market share, However, there are no such solutions for on-demand warehousing. In response to that, the Hellenic Institute of Transport develops in the framework of a research project under the name Weremento, co-financed by the European Union and Greek National Funds, develops a virtual freight center for connecting in real time users that are in search for a warehouse space demand with others that have excess or underutilized warehouse space through a single access point, a digital platform. The VFC, as it is shown also in this slide, aims at providing to a wide range of businesses the required visibility and information on the available, <coughs> sorry, on the available logistics facilities and services in various regions of the country, together with the clever tools to make effective use of these areas and adapting a flexible and dynamic supply chain structure according to their needs and business goals. The main philosophy of the Virtual Trade Center lies in the development of cooperative warehousing solutions for maximizing the load factor and the corresponding revenues of the supply chain logistics companies, 
and the provision of on-demand and flexible warehousing rental services for facilitating the short-term warehousing and satisfying appropriately the customer's demand. In line with this aim, the potential users of the VSC should be interested in using this platform and willing to cooperate and either, ha as either have excess ca uh, warehousing capacities for short term or long term, or they are in search for warehouse space in order to satisfy their demand. For the successful implementation of this tool and the effective penetration of the project's completion in the Greek market, it was necessary to be in frequent communication with the Greek stakeholders, which are the potential users of the platform, in order to identify their interest for the VFC, the maturity level of the actors to the daily use of matchmaking platforms, and finally to capture the main requirements and basic functionalities of the tool. In order to do so, we, we followed a three-step methodological process. First of all, we implemented expert group meetings with stakeholders that operate in the supply chain. Secondly, we distributed a questionnaire survey among different company times, car types, and finally, a comprehensive mapping and desktop analysis has been implemented of the Greek market in terms of warehousing, Data analysis for both questionnaires and expert group was made in uh, Python programming language. So, sorry. The survey approached approximately 90 Greek logisticians, which were occupied in 69 dominant Greek companies, supply chain operators. For this, only the 6% six, uh, 6 of them do not operate at that moment a warehouse, and but is in search for the appropriate facility. The remaining 94% uh, is operating either their own or rental warehousing facilities or both. In total, 140 warehousing facilities were documented. Our first aim was to investigate the current demand for warehousing facilities. The following figure highlights that almost 35% of the respondents is at the moment looking for a new facility, where half of them search for short-term warehousing solutions. In terms of supply, there is a 44% that offers space or warehousing services, which shows that besides the 3PL companies, also the remaining business sectors are willing to offer space for shared warehousing. Interestingly, both the survey and the expert group showed that regarding the existence and operation of a virtual freight center, almost the 80% of the respondents are in favor for the operation of such a tool, while a 13% is uncertain. In terms of willingness to cooperate, though, the main findings observed reveal uh, uh, reveal a lack of consistency in the respondents' opinion comparing to the strong interest expressed initially. More specifically, the figures show that only the approximately 22 and 25 percent of the respondents are willing to either share part of their available warehousing facilities for cooperating uh, warehousing or rent part of the warehousing facilities of another company. However, a corresponding percentage of 22% respectively is skeptical but positive towards this concept. Further analysis of the non-positive respondents in the framework of the expert group revealed that one of the main reasons is the lack of clear understanding on the main benefits and potential impact of uh, this virtual freight center on a company's logistics operations. In any case, the outcomes are quite encouraging for the Greek market, and so a market that, although it is not mature enough at the moment, is open to change for improving the effectiveness of its warehousing and distribution methods. The next step of this process was to identify which are the main user requirements for an effective on-demand warehousing tool. Thus, the participants that showed a positive or neutral interest in the operation of the VFC were asked to choose from a list of user requirements the most important based on their current warehousing needs. The 47% of the respondents pointed out that a dynamic and constantly growing database of warehousing repositories would help them to find quickly and easily the available spaces. In addition, the stakeholders would like to have a tool that provides quick and easy finding on the right warehouse space in the appropriate cost. 
Furthermore, 37% of the respondents would prefer to have a tool that can quickly and easily match the demand and supply of warehouse availabilities or warehouse services. 35% of the sampling would like to use the platform also as an observatory of prices of services and warehouse locations, which will allow them to map and record the current market condition and have a more comple complete view about uh, the offers. Finally, in terms of the most crucial criteria for the Greek stakeholders to use this tool, three were the main criteria identified. First is to use the daily operation of such a tool should be very as, as po simple as possible, even for users that have no previous warehousing or logistics experience. Secondly, connectivity with uh, IT systems like WMS or ERP. Uh, this is a very significant criterion uh, to ensure that the tool will be available to connect with the intercompany systems. And the third, the cost of the service. The cost of the service should be affordable for the companies in order to choose this tool as a solution to their warehousing uh, problems. So taking into consideration the results of this research, the virtual freight center that is under development will be consisted by the following innovative services. Fast and real-time matching of demand and supply based on predefined requirements. The provision of dynamic and constantly growing database of warehousing repositories. The simplification of contracting through the provision of guidelines and legal documents, the connectivity, and the provision of an up-to-date observatory of prices. Finally, in comparison with other existing e-marketplaces, this platform will provide also an additional innovative service called Fair Pricing Service. A smart pricing algorithm has been developed which identifies the best compromise among the supplier and the company that is demanding the logistic service. This algorithm takes into consideration the highest and minimum price that each part is willing to give or take, and based on specific criteria, for example, the general demand and offer, calculates the best price for both parts of transaction. The VFC platform is currently used as a warehouse observatory with a constantly growing database of registered warehouses. So far, 66 warehouses have been registered and created and created. Uh, 100 uh, warehouse compartments in 95 locations across the country. The bigger concentration can be found as expected in uh, Attiki and Thessaloniki area. Estimations of supply dynamics based on a thorough market analysis for 2019 showed significant amount of potential customers having available capacities for the, v for the VFC. If you wish uh, to have more information about the Virtual Freight Center, you can visit the site www.wermento.imet.gr. So, a new area is coming in logistics and uh, city logistics, and on-demand warehousing services are here to stay. However, we, uh, we should take into consideration that this rise of the on-demand economy is also forcing for changes <coughs> in policy making. Sorry. Many countries have until now not taken any legislative action to adapt, to adapt their legal framework to the needs of the on-demand economy workers or on-demand economy companies. So future research and future actions should be taken towards this uh, direction. Thank you for your attention.